Anthony L. Elmore, president and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, here today to bring you in another exciting Black Buddhist lecture. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association are not only the Black Buddhist Force in America, we are the Black Buddhist Force in the world, and we are the only Black Buddhist organization in the world that do not have Asian Buddhist masters. When we learn that the Asians educated all black history, culture, and language from the Buddhist teachings, we educated them out as our teachers. Now, today we're going to bring an exciting Buddhist lecture. My lecture today is called Chanting is the first step to becoming a Buddhist. Share something with you. This is what you were doing when I came up. Yeah, it was. And I'd really like to finish it with you. Okay. Just follow me, Anna. Say these words with me. Nam Myo. Nam Myo. Renge. Kyo. Renge Kyo. Jacket, what? <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what I'm saying. It sounds. I know, I know, I know. It it feels strange, but it's chanting. I'm, I'm a Buddhist now, and when you chant, Anna, you can see things clearly. It's like life's mirror, and when you can see yourself clearly, you can change anything. Come on, try it with me. Nam myo renge kyo. 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 Nam yo horenge kyo, nam yo horenge kyo, nam yo horenge kyo. Nam yo horenge kyo, nam yo horenge kyo, nam yo horenge kyo. That's my little request. Could you just om nom renge kyo once just to hear you chant? You want to hear me? Yeah. Okay. Nam yo renge kyo Nam yo renge kyo Nam yo renge kyo Nyo renge yo nam yo renge yo nam yo renge yo nam yo renge yo nam yo renge kyo Hello I am Anthony Alf Elmore. I'm going to explain to you what is Nam Yo Ho Renge Kyo. Nam Yo Ho Renge Kyo is the essence of all universal phenomena. Nam means devotion of body, mind, and spirit. Nam is a practice or devotion. Myo Ho means mystic law. All phenomena is Myo Ho or life and death. Our universe is governed by Myoho or mystic laws. Our universe and phenomena is Myoho or an unexplainable law. Renge means lotus flower or cause and effect. All phenomena is a result of the law of cause and effect. Kyo means the Buddhist teachings. In a broad sense, Kyo conveys the concept that all things in the universe are the manifestation of the mystic law or teachings. Nam Myoho Renge Kyo means Shoho Jisho or all phenomena manifest the true law. The primary practice in this national is one of the chanting. is the practice of reserving the mind. Not only do we observe our mind, we polish our minds. In the Christian religion, 
the ultimate goal is to reach the state of heaven. This is an ideal state where everything is perfect in the world. Now, a Buddha, or in Buddhism, it teaches that inherently we all have what is called an enlightened nature. So what we as Buddhists seek to do, we do not necessarily, happiness is not our greatest goal. Now, let me explain what we mean by that. That happiness is not the greatest goal. The greatest goal for us is really not to go to heaven. But the greatest goal of a Buddhist is to cultivate one's Buddha nature. Now, what does that mean? We live on this earth. Now, every day that we live on this earth, we can talk about heaven, and some of us know about hell because some of us catch hell every day. But how do we cultivate a life condition, a life condition that teaches us to be happy? But Buddhism teaches you that we develop our enlightened life condition and with an enlightened life condition we are able to find happiness with inside ourselves. Now, what is it that makes the Buddhist teaching different? What is it about Buddhism that's different? If Christianity and Buddhism, Judaism and all other teachings are inclusive of Buddhism or they're not non-Buddhist teachings, what is the difference? See, it is the Lotus Sutra that teaches the idea of the ten worlds. And of the ten worlds, the highest life condition that you strive for is enlightenment, or what we call Buddhahood. Now, what is Buddhahood? And how do we compare Buddhahood to happiness? See, a lot of people, their greatest goal in life is to be happy. For example, their world is, that's why I'm going to go into a world of happy, and what some people do? Some people who are unenlightened, they will go and they says, man, I'm going to do cocaine and crack all day long. I'm going to do it all day long and I'm going to do cocaine and crack 24-7. Because all I'm going to do is get messed up. I'm going to get my head messed up. Now, these are people who are actually happy. Their greatest goal in life is happiness. I know some dudes that they says, man, all I want to do is get on me some women, and the more women I get, the more happiness I got. And they live a Gnostic lifestyle that their whole life is pursuing happiness. Now, how is it that a Buddha is different? See, the difference between a Buddha or Buddhist or what the Buddhist teachings, it teach you how to bring out your inherent Buddha nature or your inherent enlightened nature. What is your enlightened nature? Your enlightened nature is Buddhahood. Now, in order to bring out this inherent nature, you bring it out through the study of the Lotus Sutra. Now, what is the Lotus Sutra and why is the Lotus Sutra important? See, the Lotus Sutra is important because the Lotus Sutra is the mind of the Buddha. And the mind of the Buddha or the mind of a human or the spirit of a Buddha is expressed in the voice. 
We learn the spirit because our spirit comes out. It has to manifest itself in a physical entity. So when you chant Namu Yohori Gekyo, that is the sound of that is the spirit of the Buddha. And when you chant the spirit of the Buddha, then you are changing the environment. What is it that our society needs? Our society needs a level of enlightenment. What is the difference? The difference is that we want to become an enlightened society and the Lotus Sutra is a teachings. Not necessarily about happiness, but it's a, it's, it, it is a teachings that deals with becoming an enlightened or an evolved society. Because in the Buddhist religion, the Buddhist religion of the world of enlightenment, of the world of Buddhahood, or the world of Bodhisattva, these are worlds of which are life conditions where you dedicate yourself to evolving to being a higher human being. See, we must evolve. Now, in the Buddhist teachings, there's what? Happiness? Which, in Buddhism, that's what it's called, the ten worlds. The ten worlds, the lowest world is hell. The second is hunger. The third is called animality. The fourth is anger. The fifth is humanity. And the sixth world is heaven, or is happiness. But Buddhism teaches there's a, there's, there's a greater world than even happiness, and that is the world of learning. Because this is a higher world when you put your sights in terms of learning and becoming an enlightened person. And there's an eighth world which is called self-realization. And there's a ninth world that we call Bodhisattva. And this is kind of like the idea of being Christ-like or being good to help other people. These are conditions. But the highest condition of total, absolute, indestructible happiness, and this is the world of Buddhahood. And the world of Buddhahood is a world that's inherently within every human being. But you tap the world of Buddhahood by tapping into an environment of the Buddha. Now, what is the environment of the Buddha? The environment of the Buddha is the Lotus Sutra. Now, what is the title of the Lotus Sutra? The title of the Lotus Sutra is called Myoho Renge Kyo. But, it was Nichiren who added the word Namu, a Namas, which means devotion. So, when you devote yourself to the mystic law of cause and effect teachings, that means that you have committed yourself to become a human being who is evolving. For example, I hear some people say, I'm going to go to church and I'm going to get happy. And it's good. And many people go to church to get happy. Now, how does this Buddhism differ from that? What the Buddhist teachings teach you is that you practice Buddhism to tap your enlightened nature. Now what does that mean? Tapping an enlightened nature means that you have committed yourself to evolving. In the life of Dr. Martin Luther King, I remember so clearly that people wasn't all in love with Dr. Martin Luther King. Most of the people, most of the ministers were saying, why is he coming in here in Memphis to cause him trouble? They were against Dr. Martin Luther King. They said, why is he causing trouble? These were unenlightened people because they were not enlightened to the idea of equality. They had lived a life of a settlement. 
Like even when you go back to Harriet Tugman, Harriet Tugman was taking some slaves to freedom. And these slaves were going to run back and they weren't going to run away because they did not have the courage to leave, to walk out of slavery. They did not want to evolve. Harry Tubman pulled a pistol on them and said, you are going to be free whether you want to be free or not. You see, the greatest thing and the greatest happiness that can happen to a society is that we as human beings evolve, that we become enlightened people. Enlightenment is not about some Asian on a mountain or not even a brother on a mountain who decides to go up on the mountain and meditate. Enlightenment is not about joining together with some Asians and white people and call yourself Buddhist because you follow some Buddhist priest with a robe and a bald head. The only true Buddhism is the Lotus Sutra, the highest of the Buddhist teachings. You see, the essence of the Lotus Sutra is in the title. The title of the Lotus Sutra is Myo Ho Rin Ge Kyo. You see, the 13th century black Japanese Buddhist sage Nitrin Shonen added the Pali, a black language word, Nam or Namu. Namu means to awaken. We awaken to Myo. Myo means correct. It also means unfathomable. It also means mystic. It also means God. You see, the word Ho means law or the 3,000 worlds in a momentary state of existence. Now, the word Renge, the Buddha wrote this as a metaphor that represents the simultaneous law of cause and effect. It is represented by the lotus flower, whereas we see the flower in seed or the simultaneousness of the flowers in the sea. You see, this means cause and effect. You see, the word Kyo means not only the Buddhist teachings, Kyo means all the teachings of the universe. In essence, the word Kyo means to overcome delusion. We at times suffer from delusion. Sometimes we feel fear. Sometimes we get angry, or sometimes we can even be lethargic. You see, chanting Namu Myoho Renge Kyo is a practice to develop our enlightened life condition. In common sense terms, happiness is a skill. When you say that you are a Buddhist, it means that you awaken to the correct law of cause and effect teachings. You see, we start off Buddhism with chanting. We only study, or rather we also study science and the universal laws. Now, when we put this together, we are like a, say, a power. You see, Imagine a pilot on a commercial airline, now in an airplane. He cannot see where he's going. He must follow and have faith in his instruments. He must have faith in the control tower who have to guide him. Now, when he looks at his instruments, he knows the speed he's going. He knows how high he's up in the air. He knows how much gas he's got. But he also has confidence because he has experience and skills, and even with all of his skills, he also has to have a little faith. You see, when you begin to chant Namu Milho Renge Kyo, you are starting Buddhist faith. You see, after a while, as you begin to chant Namu Namu Milho Renge Kyo, you become like a skilled pilot 
who can always navigate or steer his ship to safety. You see, just like a plane, sometimes you have a rough landing, most of the time you have a smooth landing, but there are turbulence, and sometimes you have a rough landing, but you're not steering an airship, but you are steering your life to have a smooth landing. That's what Buddhism is about, all about, is learning to steer your life. So in essence, Buddhism is not meditation, but Buddhism is education.